wow, 100 miles, it looks like impossible, but not because of course it will be hard. But if you know why you are here, if it's a dream, I'm sure it's possible to do it. Hey, everybody, welcome to the podcast. My guest today is one of the greatest, some might even say the greatest, ultra distance trail runners in the world. His name is Francois Den. And although that name might not be quite as ubiquitous as that of Killian Journeys, at least outside of the insular ultra world, make no mistake, this man who calls the Alps home is just an absolute beast. Among his countless achievements, Francois has won UTMB, the world's most prestigious trail ultra, four times, a record only recently matched by Killian himself this year, setting course records twice. In 2017, Francois clocked the fastest ever traverse of the 210-mile John Muir Trail. And in 2021, Francois won the Hard Rock 100, one of, if not the most difficult trail ultras, breaking the overall record previously held by Killian. Beyond his career as a professional athlete, Francois is a physiotherapist, he's a family man, he's a father of three children, as well as a winemaker. And a couple months ago, I had the privilege to meet, to hang out with, and host a live conversation with Francois in Boulder, Colorado, as part of an event hosted by Solomon, the sponsor we both share. And the next day, it was followed up by the podcast conversation you are now about to enjoy. Beyond his mastery of ultra running, what really strikes me most about Francois is his really low-key, humble, and grounded approach to his craft, how he manages to strike this truly healthy balance between the rigors of pursuing that mastery and the importance of enjoying life, enjoying family, community, and other interests outside of sport altogether. In addition to covering his path to excellence, we discuss the principles that drive his peak performance longevity. We talk about the details of his training regimen. We discuss advice for tackling your first ultra and many other topics. I should say upfront that Francois's French accent can be a bit thick at times, but if you listen closely, uh, you should be just fine and be sure to make sure the captions are playing on YouTube here so you can catch every word. So with that, please enjoy my conversation with Francois Dan. Good, well, um, thank you for doing this. It's so nice to meet you. I can't wait to learn about your life. I'm excited to talk to you. And uh, here we are in a running store in Boulder, Colorado, doing this podcast old school on the road. And uh, yeah, uh, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? How are you um, getting your head straight for the big Hard Rock 100? Yes, all, all of that. <laughs> now I'm so so happy to be there to to make it to to the US again, and I really I really enjoy this part of the of the season and the, of the year. And since uh, yes, two years, uh, I'm so happy to to build my season until uh, until June uh, where I where I move to Colorado and. Um, yeah, this year will be uh, will be special for sure too. And already today, because I, I'm so happy to to discuss with you, I I follow a bit your uh, your life and your different podcast, and it's always interesting to have um, yeah this kind of uh, different uh, approach of running, and uh, it's uh, it's amazing to to be there to discuss with you. Uh, I appreciate that, and you know, and kind of reflecting on your life and and your career. Um, obviously, you're one of the greatest of all time in, in trail running. Um, four UTMB wins. You won Hard Rock last year, set the record. You're going into Hard Rock again, um, coming up in, in a very short period of time here. Um, and my sense is that you're very celebrated in Europe, uh, but that in the United States or in North America, perhaps less so. So I have a very specific agenda for this podcast, which is to help raise awareness of uh, your amazing talent and, uh, your and country career. Is, is, <laughs> is too big. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, it's an it's an interesting moment because I think that the interest in trail running and adventure racing, you know, is on the rise very much. So people are getting into it, and it's just growing at an explosive rate right now. 
Um, and so I think that, you know, North America is very primed to learn more about your life and, you know, how you've been able to do the things that, that you do. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, I'm so happy to, <laughs> to discuss about that, but yeah, it's, it's a bit party specific because uh, there's always a, um, yes, uh, like a comparison between U uh, Europe and North America and everybody thinks that. Uh, in US and Europe, everybody thinks it's totally different. Uh, try running in US is totally different than try running in Europe or in France. And for me, not at all. <laughs> mm. We just uh, we are just happy to be in the mountain, and you have some very nice and specific mountain here, and in France too, in Europe too. So for me, it's just just about be be passionate to to spend some long day in the mountain, and to listen about yourself, to try to. Yeah, to to be the better part of you in the mountain and uh, for some long days. So, yeah, for me, it's not uh, being an American runner or being European runner. It's just being a, a mountain runner, and uh, that's why I'm so happy to 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 discuss with American runner and to share my experience with them because it's always a, it's always interesting and funny to to see a bit uh, the media and how the people uh, can uh, right. Can discuss about that. <laughs> that 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 seems like maybe that's an American thing. Like here in America, we're thinking, oh, we have a certain way of training, but what are those guys over there doing in the Alps? They're living in small villages and they're just going out, you know, way up into high elevation every single day. And perhaps, you know, because we don't have access to those types of mountains, that there's something to your lifestyle. Uh, or your kind of relationship with training that is very different than the way that the Americans approach it. And I've, I've heard you say like, you kind of disabuse people of this notion. You're like, no, it's not actually that different, but your friend, Jim Walmsley, you know, seems to be under that impression, which is why he moved to France, feeling like that is the missing ingredient in his ability to, you know, kind of win UTMB. Like he had to go and immerse himself in that culture and that lifestyle. We'll see, <laughs> but uh, no, I think uh, yeah, I think it's, it could be interesting to discuss with him. But I think it's m it's not just about uh, the immersion in a French uh, Alp and French mountain who will make the difference. It's maybe more his approach of the event, more his approach of his training, and I'm sure he can he can do the same training in in US and have the same approach if it takes time for that. But I think in Flagstaff it's very warm. It's a bit more flat than in, in France. But I'm sure that in Silverton, he can train uh, even better than in France for, for a race like UTMB. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, for me, it's very, very interesting. It's very nice to have him uh, just like 200 meters from the house so we yeah. can share some very good training and moment and I really appreciate him. But uh, as uh, the, the American runner, it's always nice to, yes, to share our culture, to share um, some very good moment and... Uh, yeah, I try to to discover a bit more the U.S. culture because I I like it and they like European culture because I think it's something like normal that we are always in, more interesting about what is different from mm. what we are, are are useful. And for me, it's very interesting to to discuss with American runner. I was there, I think, the first time in 2012, but since 10 years now, I'm I'm always always so happy to to came back in the US because I always learned some different thing and and I'm always impressed about how how big is this country and everything <laughs> and the trial and in in Europe or in France some some of the longest trials it's one hundred miles. And I was like four years ago at the beginning of the Pacific Crest trial. It's four thousand five hundred K. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> so for me it's amazing to be there. Yeah, I, I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, the sense is that in the United States, people who are trying to train at a certain level um, kind of complicate things or get really into data and spreadsheets and get very much up in their head about how to approach these races. Whereas a European um, sensibility is more like, uh, we live in these small villages, we keep our, our lives are very, you know, kind of, less complex in that regard. And, and we keep things like kind of very basic. And, you know, I do feel like there's some shared DNA with 
somebody like Killian, who, you know, will tell you like, it's just about your relationship with nature and it's about being outdoors and the humility and the experience of, you know, pushing your body and just being alone, you know, with the majesty of the mountains, which is a different relationship, I think, to performance than the kind of American mindset. Yeah, yeah, you're right, I think, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, Yes, it's not not all the, all the European are like that. Not the American are like that too. But I think it's more about an ultra approach, because I think when it's more short distance, it's it could be totally different. Mm -hmm. But on ultra distance, the approach I think must be different. And I, I cannot speak for Kilian, but I think it's a bit same as me. It's not that we okay we want to be a top runner in ultra mountain, and so we have to do that now. We we did that. And because of that, maybe we became uh, some good ultra runner, but mm -hmm. uh, it's it's totally different that I want to become a good ultra runner, so I have to do that. Just say, anyway, I do that, so maybe I can become a good ultra runner or not, but uh, anyway, we want to spend some long day in the mountain. We want to be there. We want to train like that. We want to have this kind of life. And just the... Uh, I think the the level or the performance uh, is it, just a, a consequence right. of our life, and and I can think that the approach of some American runner is maybe a bit different. Oh, I would like to to win UTMB maybe one day or something like that. So I have to train like that. I have to do that. I have to do that, and it's not it's not I think the same the same way. The, the beginning must be okay. I I'd like I would like to be in the mountain. I would like to experience myself. I would like to push my limits to discover that kind of trail or that kind of mountain. And then the consequence will be that ah, because of that life, because of that training, you will be at, sure. in front of the scene. And for short distance, I think it's not the same thing. Okay, I want to be a performer on short distance in golden train, whatever you want. Okay, so I have to focus on my training. I have to be professional. Mm -hmm. I have to do that, that, that. And then you have the result. But on ultra, I think it's, it's too many things. It's okay. It's the training. It's the performance. It's the body. But first, it's the, it's the mentality. It's the approach. It's how you train. And I, I know, I know well. I think Courtney Walter, you made some, mm -hmm. you registered some yeah, podcast yeah. with her, and I think she's one of those who have this kind of approach. She don't take care about the result of the race or yeah. everything. What she like is to be out out in out in the mountain to spend some long day. And then if she can make some race, she's so happy. And and finally, the result is just the consequence of what she did all along the year. She she don't focus on one race or another race. If it's not working on one race, okay, no worries. It's, it's not good, but no worry. She have another yeah. race, another plan. And anyway, she's so happy to train for that. So it's not the same approach. And I, I try to discuss a lot with Jim about that because... Uh, if his approach is okay, I would like to be the first American runner to win to win UTMB. The pressure is mm. really high. I hope he, he will be able to do that because it's a, an amazing runner. He's very very good. But the approach is why well, it's, it's hard for me. I think if I have that kind of approach, it's impossible for me to to win a race. Right, right, right. So essentially, what you're saying is. In the long run, especially with these longer distance mountain races, um, uh, you know, achieving goals only comes at the as a consequence of the lifestyle that you live, as opposed to being very kind of driven towards a specific result. And I, I've heard you say, um, I think it was with respect to maybe it was uh, UTMB last year. Like the question was like, how do you shoulder the pressure of going into UTMB, like you've won three times, can you do it again? Uh, you know, that must be overwhelming. And you said something like, well, if I win, great, but if I don't, you know, I'll take my kids to, you know, go do something and I have a whole life outside of this. And 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 that was what kind of made me think of the, the difference in sensibility of, you know, kind of a European mindset versus an American mindset. Whereas the American would be devastated if they lost and they're like, eh. you know, they're clenching their fists and, you know, trying to drive, kind of will a certain result as, so it's, 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 it's like the difference between self-will versus like being in, the allowing, right? Like if I'm I'm living my lifestyle, I'm allowing the result to unfold 
that is meant to be as a result of the decisions that I've made about how I live my life. Yeah, it's, it's true. I, it's even more easy for me to say that when you want it three times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. It's, it's sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you don't have pressure, but you want it three times. So right. easy to say that. Okay, sure. But for me, even the first time, if I arrive at the start line with this kind of pressure, I'm sure I I'm I won't able to finish because I, I want to protect myself and I at the as the start line, I don't want to have this kind of pressure. So I'm I'm at the start line and say, Okay, I have a very good training, I have some two very good months, and I'm so happy to be there. If I can win, if I can finish two uh, on the podium, whatever, mm -hmm. it's it's so so good. So I will be so happy. But yeah, but if not, it's okay. It's just a sport. It's just a pleasure. Right. And my life will continue, and I will have some other possibility and some other chance. But for me, it's take like twenty years maybe to arrive at the start line with this position and without any pressure. And and it's not easy every day. Every day you have to work on yourself and to say it again. And that's why I, I don't want to go back like each year on the same race. Like for me this year, going back to Hard Rock 100 again, mm -hmm. just one year after where you finish first, when you break the record, I was not expected that last year. I was thinking, okay, it's just an experience for me. Next year I will come back and I will do it better. But last year I finished and I said, how can I do it better? So right. this year you came back with a bit of pressure because even for yourself, you cannot say, okay, I will be there just to try to finish. Ah, come on, like last year you win, you break the record, you are yeah. not just here to finish. <laughs> so for me, this year it's, it's a bit more pressure, but uh, that's why I, I try to, to uh, that's why I try to have another approach to say, okay, I'm here. Last year it was just incredible. I was lucky, so I'm here again. So it's, It's so good. I'm so lucky too. So it's another race. It's another race. There's some other runners. So yes, I will. I will. I would like just to to finish it and to. It just yeah. We yeah. are just 160 runners at the start line. So I'm so lucky to be there. There's this huge community of ultra trail runner in US. It's just like a family. Everybody is so happy to to meet each other, like even tonight in Boulder, I think it will be so nice to have a, like a common event. And for me, I say, okay, I have, please enjoy right. it and don't push your pressure on yourself. And with that way, I'm sure the race will be, will be good. Right. It's such a healthy strategy and one that has longevity to it, right? Because you're, you're, you're releasing yourself from like carrying that burden. It's like confidence in the preparation gratitude for just being able to be there and be healthy and participate. And also kind of a healthy respect with, for all the variables that you don't control, the weather and other people and all that kind of stuff, right? Like the longer the race, the less control you actually have. You just have, you know, the preparation that you, that you endured just to get there. And, you know, I was listening to your conversation with Dylan Bowman. Um, you guys were talking about hard rock last year and And, and how you were, you know, you were kind of, you know, running near each other and, and realizing that you were like way ahead the, the record that Killian had set and thinking maybe perhaps we've made a, a terrible error. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it all, it all worked out, but then thinking, well, how can I do better this year and saying, well, maybe I don't have to worry about that. I'm just here to experience the community and to, to do my best. Um, and I think the community piece is also really interesting. I know that last year um, was the first running of Hard Rock in three years because of COVID and also uh, you know weather, weather conditions yeah. prior to that. But you had come to Silverton in 2019, nonetheless, to uh, you know engage with the community, train on the the course, and kind of you know now you've become kind of part of that that community that you're returning yeah. to tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was very nice in 2019 to be able to be there, and we have some very good moments, and we discover the race without any pressure with each other. It was very, very interesting. There's a lot of snow, so it was, it was very interesting to play in the snow because, like people like Jim, they they just learn how to run on the snow uh -huh. four years ago. So it was very interesting for me to discuss about that with them, and yeah, it's it will be a uh, Could be very interesting, and it's, it's not a good thing that Dylan Bowman won't won't race this year because yeah. last year we have an, an incredible day. So um, 
even for him, I think he, he was not expecting to run so fast at that pace. And yes, during all the race, we were thinking, oh, maybe we are too fast. But anyway, we have a very good day, so we continue. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think about the other competitors? I, I texted Dylan yesterday and I said, uh, I'm going to be talking to Francois. Like, what what would be you know interesting for me to explore with him? That is something I can't Google or find out online. And he's like, I'm so fascinated by Francois's relationship with competition, and we've already kind of covered a little bit of your sensibility with that. Um, but you seem so. Uh, it, it's really not about like what any, anyone else is doing, right? Like, and the longer the race is the less it is about, you know, some other performer. It's just about your relationship with you and the terrain. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. Um, I, I I don't take care about the other runner, even before the race, even normally during the race, but uh, but I'm a bit of a competitor. So when I'm yeah. during the race, I, I really like and enjoy to play with the other runner, but it's not my main goal for sure. Do you think about like, oh, I know this runner uses this strategy, so I have to look out for that, or do you not pay attention to any of that? No, I I, I know that, and I play with that, and I, yeah, I, I, you have time to think during 24 hours, so you mm -hmm. can think, okay, maybe this runner is going too fast because I know him, so I, I don't have to take care about that, but you, you play with that, but you have to, your main focus must be on you, otherwise it's, I think it's too hard on ultra trial, and that's why I, I really like ultra trial running, it's totally different from the other distance. I think even since 100K now and even more, I think less than like Western States time, it's for Jim, it's around like 14 hour, I think. Yeah. I think more than 14 hour, it's another world. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> less than 14 hour, I think now competitors are, yes, well experienced, they train for that, they are very like conditioned <laughs> yeah. for that. So I think Less than 14 hours, it's, it's more like athletics and race. More than 14, 16 hours, I think it's it's another world. And more than 20 hours, it's again something else. So I think it's it's very important to have a different approach. And that's why I, uh, I think I'm still there after like my first long distance was 2006, I think. Yeah. So it's 12 years ago. And normally you, you cannot make a, a such long career in... in in high performance in sport. Right. But if I'm still there, it's maybe because this is a sport totally different and where experience helps you a lot and approach helps you a lot. And yes, that's why I think uh, I still continue to progress even if now I'm maybe too old for that. No, no, no. But no, I no. really enjoy that. And uh, I think the experience is something just interesting in, in ultra. Yeah, I mean, there is a long history in ultra running where somebody will burst onto the scene and they'll have unbelievable performances for maybe two years, three years. And then whether it's overtraining or burnout or whatever it is, they're unable to ever kind of match that level again. Like you don't see very many people who have longevity in their careers. Yeah, it's, it's so sad for me. And that's why I, I have this that kind of approach and I try to push that kind of approach with the media because I'm so sad when I saw some runner just say, okay, I will try to do six or seven ultra try in a year or even four ultra try in a year or even in France. I have some amazing runners that say, okay, I would like to do like a UTMB and Diagonal de Fou and some other race. And now it's, I think it, it's too much. It, maybe it could be one year. Like last year, I, I tried to, to running back to back uh, Hard Rock 100 and mm -hmm. UTMB. It's only six weeks, but it was my only goal for the year. And I prepared that one since three years and I run since 25 years. So it's not just, okay, you do it last year, next year you can do it. No, no, it, it's something very special and I, I won't do it again this year. And I think for Kilian, he, he will try to do it this year and even Serzina at the middle, but it's Kilian. He runs since since he was born. Yeah. So it's it's not not everybody can do that because uh, you mustn't do that. I think top marathon, they did two, two races in a year and it's two hours. And for us, it's 24 hours. So mm -hmm. how can we do more than two races? Right. And I see so many, many runners, even American runner. When I started in 2012, they were there, and now it's so hard for them. I think uh, about like Rob Kraus or some people. Uh, 
Jeff Rose or some people like that, even Anton, it's yeah, the, mm -hmm. the race and maybe sometimes too much and then it was too hard to recover. And they were so good and I think maybe they get overtrained or too much too much pressure or something like that and then it's too hard for the body to come back. So, right. so we have to be really, really, really relaxed about that and we discuss a lot uh, with Jim about that and this year that's why he, he did a race in April and then he said, okay, now I just focus on UTMB and maybe it mm -hmm. will be my season. I think, ah, oh, it's a very good approach and I like it because you will be very fresh and I'm sure that next year you will be there again and this is the most important for me. Winning a race, it's important, but be able to to run again in five years, I think it's the most important thing for us and for our body. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think that the the sport is maturing in terms of how people are understanding training and performance. Those runners that you mentioned and even the generation prior to that, like very little was known because people were pushing the boundaries of the distances that anybody thought humans could even run to begin with. And so, of course, the mentality is like, well, if we can do that, let's train more, let's train more. And then suddenly all of these people, you know, are kind of falling off the wayside. But we saw Anton come back after that long, yeah. you know, period of absence. So I think there is that pos now it's like, oh, well, if you were one of those people, maybe you can rebuild in a new and different way. Yeah, it was so nice last year yeah. to see see him again. And I, I chat with him yesterday because I know that he, he lived not so far from there and he's a bit focused on bicycle yeah, actually. Yeah. He's uh, he will, on Instagram he will, riding his bike everywhere. He will do 600 miles on <laughs> Friday or Thursday. <laughs> so, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was so nice to, to see him again. And yeah, Anton or even Joe Grant, I, I'm sure I will see see him in, in our rock in two days. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to continue to discuss with them. Every year, I, I'm so happy to meet uh, Anna Frost. And she was here even before me in the trial running community. And it's, it's so nice to see that that kind of people, okay, they are so happy about their performance and about their their career and which race that they we, uh, was able to win, but they are even more happy to be still there and still able to run. And if you discuss with them, they will, I'm sure 100% that they will say the most important thing is just to be able to be again in the mountain today to be able to have some long day and to share some nice one with the people in the community. It's even more important than winning that race or the race or push, pushing too much for that. Because in 20 years, what what will you what will you remember? It's, oh, I was able to do that, but now I'm not, I don't want to run anymore. I don't want to be in the mountain. I, right. I'm not passionate about that. Well, okay, I did that, but I'm still there and I'm still so happy and so passionate to do that. And for me, it's the most important thing that, okay. Remaining joyful about yeah, the whole experience. I, I just want to be there in, in five or 10 years with my kids and to say, okay, I'm so happy to share with you this loop around Mont Blanc. Or, oh, you know, kids, I was there in Silverton like 20 years ago. Uh -huh. And I, now I'm still there with you and I'm able to make a loop around night work. Ah, it's, I think it's my biggest dream actually, even more than winning again a race. Just to be there in 10 years and to say, okay, I'm there and I can share it with you. It's, wow, this right. is for me the most important thing. That's all fine, but come on, let's get honest here. I don't <laughs> want to make you uncomfortable, but like four UTMB wins. I mean, there's got to be a killer under the surface there. <laughs> like what, why are you so much better than everyone else? <laughs> like, What is the secret weapon? Like, what are you doing that others aren't doing or or how are you, you know, built physiologically so that you are so exceptional at this sport? I, I know just that <laughs> I, I'm so passionate uh, when uh, when you, you know, when when you are at the start line, if you build like, like we speak, uh, speak earlier, when you are at the start line, you, you just, you don't feel the pressure, you just feel a, a power just to say, wow, I'm here. I wait that moment since two years, and I'm here. So everybody say, "Oh, you, can, oh, you can do one or two nights without sleeping." I say, "How can I sleep? I wait that moment since two years. So I'm so excited. I'm so mm. happy to be there. And then it's like you have you have rings, so you can you can fly over the mountain. And I'm so happy. And and then 
if the race goes like you want, then you're okay. It would be sunset, sunrise. That would be this path is so unbelievable. And then, oh, you can feel your sensation. You can feel your training. You can feel what you built since 10 years, your strategy about food, about that lamp, about equipment, about material, about family, about everything. There's a lot of things. And when everything match, wow. Mm -hmm. Then you feel, okay, today I'm, I'm perfect day and you don't feel it. And even like, I think last year in hard work, I, I was even more fast at the end than at the beginning, just because I was, wow, today it's just so incredible. And I remember with Dakota Jones, we play in the, he paced me at the, at the last, on the last part and we just play and we run all, 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 mm -hmm. all, all the time. I say, okay, I'm even faster than at the beginning. It's just crazy. And just no matter if it's 10, 20, 25 hours, you just, you just happy and then you you can you can feel yeah, that you yeah you are just flying and it's just a very good moment and yeah it's this is what I I I try to uh, this kind of sense of feelings I I try to have uh, on a race right your emotional relationship to the whole thing but as somebody you you have a background in physiotherapy right so right. from like a biological perspective or a training perspective? Like, are you uh, doing things in training that you think others aren't? Or is there something about your the way that you're, you're built, like Killian has a crazy VO2 max? Or, you know, is there something that makes you extra well-suited to this type of sport? Or do you think it's just because you've been doing it for a long time? And like, I don't know, like I'm trying to wrap my head around yeah. like what... I'm sure there are other people that participate in these races who are very grateful to be there, right? And have a love for the mountains. So there is something different going on with you, is there yeah. not? No, it's sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, if I have the, a I'm trying to make you blush. If yeah. I have a scientific approach, it's, it's sure that, uh, yes, I cannot uh, complain about my performance and about my body. But I think I, I have a totally different approach than Kian. I think uh, Kian is a bit different because he tried to be to perform on short distance and long distance. Mm -hmm. so, and I think it's not a, it's not a secret that Kian has some incredible uh, capacity and ability in terms of earth and breath and right. everything. Right, a very high level yeah. of exertion. And, yeah. and me, I practice uh, like athletism, like 3,000 uh, steeplechase when I was young or cross country. And uh, I was not bad, but I was not uh, at the top level. And I think, I, okay, I can run fast, but not, uh, not as... Yes, I'm, I'm, I was not very, very, very mm -hmm. good and not the top French performer. But I think it was enough for ultra trial at distance. And so I'm not, uh, I, I don't train just for ultra trial distance because during winter I made some intensity and something like that, not as Kilian, but more than 90% of people which practice on ultra trial in France or even in Europe or US, I think. So uh, I think I, uh, during winter, I work a lot on my physiology and on intensity and something like that. So I think I, it's not it's hard to compare to Kian because it's mm -hmm. something different. But if I compare some to the to the other long long distance or ultra distance runner, I think uh, on short distance I'm I could be better than them. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I like is the same approach as them. It's spend some long day in the mountain, so like I, I f even more. So I think I, I can have the same endurance training than them. But if I want to push, I can push a bit a bit higher than them. Right. So it was interesting, like last year in UTMB, I think we have the same ba background with the five or six other runner. But because we play too much with Jim Wamsley, I was just so destroyed after 80K. And in the descent, it was hard for me to go fast, but I know that if I want to push in each ascent, I can, I can make like four or five minutes faster than the other. Mm -hmm. So it was so comfortable for me, not comfortable because painful, but it yeah. was very interesting for me to say, okay, even if I lose three minutes in each descent, it's, it's not so bad because I, I can easily put them five or four minutes in each ascent. So I think for me, it's, uh, it's very interesting to have this background just to know that, okay, in ultra distance, I may be like the other, but if I want to push, 
I can mm-hmm. push a bit more. You have that extra gear. So you, yeah. in your back pocket, you have the confidence to know like, it's fine, I'm running with you right now because when we get to that grade up there, <laughs> I'm gonna put I, you in the I dust. can go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the training a little bit. Uh, you know, is there, what is the structure to it? What is the the philosophy of the day in, day out approach? You know, what is, it t- you know, walk us through what that looks yeah, like. Yeah, so I've, I, I try to have a long term uh, approach on my training and on my race and on my career even. So I don't have a, like a day-to-day running. I, I, I don't like to have any routine and I can't because I built my life like totally mm-hmm. different than a normal runner or professional yeah. runner because uh, you know what what it means to have some kids. <laughs> but, uh, but with yes. three kids, I have like now uh, nine, seven and three years old. And I... Yeah. It's amazing you have time I to do to anything. I want to be there with them. Yeah. And with my wife, we, are, we we want to have some common project about the wine, about creating an event, about different things. So it's 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 what I want. It's not just, okay, uh, you can just be a professional runner. Yes, if I want, I can be a professional runner. And if I don't want any kids, uh, we can make these shows with my wife. But we don't want that. We want to have a normal life, a social life. We want to have kids, a family story. We want to have a, a real job and to spend some time with that dog then. Okay, I know that, so I, I have to train when I have time. And I know that, uh, yes, before I work, I will have to spend some long day in the mountain. So that's why I'm here like uh, two weeks before the race. Mm-hmm. That's why I will live in Reunion Island like two weeks and a half before the race because I have to race to beat myself. I have to focus more on my training. But uh, but yes, I I just know that uh, okay, two months before a long race, you have to to spend more long day in the mountain. You have to train specifically for for each or each race, like for hard work. I I I know that the, one of the most important thing is the altitude training. So I I don't run that much uh, like during since the last two months, but I spend a lot of time in high mountain. So mm-hmm. it was in skimo, it was in climbing, it was something like that. And I think if I compare to last year, I run even less, but I spend more time in high altitude. So I I think it's it's maybe a good thing for hard work. And if I have to go to Reunion Island at the end of the year, I know that uh, it's totally different. And I will have to focus more like on decent training, something mm-hmm. like that to... There's a lot of stairs in that island, so I have to, to work with big steps or something like that. And uh, I, I try to think like six months or five months before the race, okay, what will be specific on that on that race? And then every day, every night, every training, you think about that, okay, what I'm actually doing, it's important for next race, or it's no matter, so mm-hmm. I, I try to don't do that. Right, right. And yes, and then I have, yes, I try to respect a lot the, the season and the, the condition uh, in the mountain. So that's why I, I choose that kind of season, actually, that starting my running season with Hard Rock 100, it's just perfect for me because uh, there's a lot of snow from like December to May where I live. So it, it's hard to be ready for a race in April or May mm-hmm. because uh, it means that you have to take the car to go in the valley to train. And it's, this is what I... It, not what I love. It's what I love. It's running from my door or skiing from my door. Yeah. So it's easier for me to to make some to practice some skimo from January to May, and I think it's a very very good training for endurance training and for ultra strategy for summer. But then you have to back on running slowly and progressively, and I have all the of the months of April, May, and June to back on running progressively. So it's just perfect for a race like mid July. So that's why I, I choose that kind of strategy since three to four years now. Right. Just because I know, okay, if I have to train in March in running, it will be hard for m- mm-hmm. to get the motivation and mentally. So that's why I, I try to adapt my strategy Makes like so that bad. and to think like long time ago with my wife, with my friends, with my partner, about my calendar to say, okay, I will do it next year. So I have to focus mid-July, I have to focus mid-October, so I have to plan everything around that. So even about, uh, you know, the product development, the family events, the social, the holidays, everything. Mm-hmm. I try to plan it like in November and December. And then 
it's it's a way easier to train and to everything because uh, with my family we know we know with the kid and the family since last year since one month yeah, one you, year ago you, that you can I, I will leave ahead. the family this is what, yeah exactly end of June it's not like if I say to them one week ago it would be uh, so hard for them but no since one year we prepare that since one year we know that okay it will be hard for them and for me to be without each other during three weeks so we have to plan some strategies they will visit uh, some friends some families they will have some stage they will have some different thing I will, I will prepare many things so it's easier and we wait that moment finally mm -hmm. and we will be so happy to meet each other in three weeks so it just if if you plan it since one year or even more, it's it's okay. so easy. But yeah. if you don't say it to your people or you, <laughs> okay, see hey, you later. In one month, uh, yeah. I have a, my biggest race of my life, and bye bye. Uh, it's right. so hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is my. It's not like I don't know if I answer very well to your question. It's not my uh, strategic of training, but but planning things like that, I think it's. It's a key point of the training because then you just have to say, okay, we we spare, we bring, we keep some free time for that. We we plan this event or this event and this event, and finally your tra training is nearly done like that. Because mm -hmm. now I'm here two weeks and a half before hard work. I finish all my product development. I'm just without family. I just have time for me. Right. What will you do when you are in the mountain? Just with free time for you, it's training. So <laughs> right. it's easy to train. So there is a, there is something uh, counterintuitive, but but kind of undeniable about um, having a full life outside of your life as an athlete. You know, you would think you would you would enhance your performance by living like a monk in a cabin alone and just waking up in the morning and going out and training all day with no distractions year round, and perhaps you could get a great performance in the short term. But, you know, the more I speak to you, the more I realize how deeply you think about longevity. Like it's more about trying to be the best that you can be for the longest period of time. And in order to do that, you have to have uh, diversity in your life. You have to be living your life. Um, you can't be putting aside things that you want in your life for the sake of performance. So to have three kids, to have you know, this full life where you're engaged in your community and, you know, your your previous career as a winemaker, which I want to talk about, like all of those things feel like they would detract from your performances. But my sense is that all of those things ultimately, you know, enhance your performance. They fuel your life because you're a happy, grounded person with interests outside of just running. Yeah, it's true, but uh, it's true too that you are more tired and it's not yeah. easy to train every day. And some, I, actually, it's it was a, I have a very hard months of <laughs> months of June, and I discuss a lot with Jim and say, okay, phew, okay, you don't have any kids. He's just in France for training. <laughs> yeah, you have just to wake up, make yeah. his coffee, and then thinking, oh, where can I go today to train? Uh -huh. And you, you wake up at six in the morning because the baby's crying. Then you have to take kids to school. Then you have to have a female and partner and media to do. And then if you have time, you can go to train, but you have too many things to do. And, ah, okay, it's too much. How can mm. I perform like that? But on those other things, you think about what you say. and say, okay, this is my life. I choose that one. And it's helped me a lot. So it's 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 never easy to to have this uh, background and to have. A, but I think for me, every everybody is different. But for me, it was very important since the beginning, and we discuss a lot of, of that with my wife, to have a balanced life, to have this different pillar, to have okay, the family, social, the job, the sport, everything. And and sport is important. Mm -hmm. But for me, I, I try to never put it like a, the most important thing in my life. I always try to have some background to say, okay, it's it's just a pleasure, it's just a passion, and and I think having kids and something for me are, are, was always more important for than everything because uh, if you focus too much on sport, okay, one year, it's if it's everything works, okay, it's perfect, but if it's doing ten years, then ten years you you look uh, you look beside you, or you look around you, and say, mm -hmm. okay, since 10 years, I focus on that, and finally, I don't have any kids, and I don't build everything. For me, 
I think it's well, your whole sense of identity is wrapped up in 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 your performances. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, with respect to the training, I've heard you say uh, something along the lines of, "It's more important, like the f- the 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 frequency of your trainings is more important than like the length of your trainings." Like, there's this idea if you're going to be an ultra runner, you got to go out and run for 12 hours a day every <laughs> single day, right? And I think you've said like your longer runs are really kind of in the you know six to seven hour range. You'll go out for those longer days of as you mentioned earlier, just being in the mountains, schemo, or just, you know, kind of hiking or whatever it is to experience altitude. But in terms of the running, my sense is that you're careful not to overdo it and go into that kind of overtraining zone where you can get injured or burn out. I try to, but you, uh, you always have some pain somewhere. Uh-huh. And I have an actual, yeah, some, some difficulty with some part of my body, but I try to to make some cycling and to make different things. And I, I try to, to never push too much uh, to be over training or over injured. So yes, I, I, I try to do that. But uh, yes, I, it's 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 kind of part of my training too, to say, okay, I wake up, uh, my second kids, they wake up like eight times each night right. until he had three uh-huh. years. So <laughs> you, can, you can say, okay, I'm too tired and I cannot train. Or you can say, okay, I will train. But training when you're anyway, tired is but, kind of a good thing. But yes, I was thinking that. I was thinking, okay, I'm so tired, but I have to train. But when you are in your neutral after 20 hours, what do you think? You are tired too. So if you never train when you are tired, mm-hmm. you will never have this feeling. So me say, okay, I will, I will uh, train with less intensity, of course, maybe with less uh, energy, of course, but I will train. Anyway, even if I'm tired, even if I drink too much the day before, even if I made too much party, even okay, it's even if I eat too much, even if just I have my breakfast, okay, you have to test everything because in ultra you will meet everything, and in ultra what we say earlier is that uh, you cannot you can plan everything, but you will to adapt you will have to adapt everything. Yeah, because uh, this is why we made ultra if we know. What will happen? We can make athletes more cross country or some loop, uh, but no, we, we go in the mountain, in high mountain, uh, just because we want to have some something different. We we will have to adapt ourselves, and that's why I think my life maybe it's good for ultra distance because uh, okay, this morning we are in US, uh, we want to try uh, scramble scramble eggs and bacon and everything, but then okay, you will run okay. But I won't have to wait three hours for running and I have to train directly. So, oh, okay, I feel heavy. Okay, I feel uh, thirsty. Okay, I feel a bit uh, tired about the jet lag. Okay, but if I have to wait that everything is correct to mm. run, okay, I will run in one week. Mm-hmm. So, no, it's not good. So, okay, yesterday we arrived. Uh, we have a 24 hour day of traveling. But, okay, I'm in Boulder. I'm so happy to be there. I, w- I would like to discover. Uh, the Florentines, so I, I go there for a two-hour run. For sure, I don't have the best feeling of my life. Even <laughs> the worst feeling yeah. of my life during running, I sweat a lot. I don't have any any power, but but this is the thing. I think this yeah. is the thing, and this is really a good training, I think, for ultra mm-hmm. because you have to adapt. You have to feel what's happening in your body, how, how you can answer and readapt and make things. And finally, I was able to run two hours. And I think it's it's a good thing. But if your whole life is well planned to always be at, at the best um, possibility for your training, when you arrive in an ultra, you're you don't be, you're you going to be waiting for a long time. You don't yeah. know how to do. Yeah. Right, right. You're missing the whole point. Yeah, of and night. of course, when you arrive in Cormier after a ten hour middle of the night, of course, your legs are destroyed. Of course, you run ten hour too fast. Mm-hmm. With with descent, ascent, and then it's middle of the night. Of course, you feel tired, and you don't know what's happened because you don't want to eat. Of course, because it's middle of the night, nobody eats at the middle of the night. Yeah. So you don't feel comfortable. But if your body was never in that in that position, you don't know how to do. But if your body was okay, I remember, 
I did that or I have this same feeling or, okay, I can't do it because I, I have the experience that I can. Then you continue and mm -hmm. then you can be a better part of yourself and even won the race. But that's why I think uh, my life is not finally so bad for ultra training. Right. Not maybe for athletism and performance and short distance <laughs> training, but for ultra. Every training session, you're combating an obstacle, right? Yeah. Just to get out the door. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is a really interesting lens to look at it. Um, how has how has your your training evolved over the years? I mean, with every win or miss, you know, all of these accomplishments, you're learning along the way. And I assume like refining, figuring out what works for you, what what doesn't. Like, did you do anything different this year leading up to hard rock um, versus leading up to hard rock last year? Yeah, of course, I try to... Uh, no, normally, I never did a, a race uh, from one year to, uh, to the next year directly mm -hmm. because uh, you have too, too many elements of comparison and it's too hard for me yeah. and you put too, too much pressure. But, uh, but it's, it's a bit the game of the hard work 100 when you want it then it's interesting to come back to come back the year after because you you went with the other way uh, for the community i think it's it's very nice to come back and i'm so happy to be there again so i have to to, to compose with that but uh yes last year i feel that uh, the altitude training it's something very important so that year I, I was really focused a bit more on that mm -hmm. and i tried to build some project around mont blanc which which is the highest mountain in Europe. But the conditions were not so good this year because it was really dry. So I made some more some rock climbing. We go to uh, in Switzerland and in Italy, uh, I, I climb in Serving. I don't know if you know this mountain, mm -hmm. but it's a very iconic mountain. And we spent some more than 20 hours above than 4,000 meters. And I did Mont Blanc in Schimo and I trained a lot like that. So I think uh, about the altitude training, I'm, I'm better than last year. Mm -hmm. But uh, just about training, I think uh, because it's it's a life and we we try to create an event with my wife for next September. It's the uh, first edition. So I was not uh, thinking that it would take this amount of time to us. And so I don't have... Uh, I don't have the time that I was thinking to have for training for just for running. So I think I, I'm a bit less less trained than last year in, in training and uh, even more in descent because uh, because of the we 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 enjoy to spend mm -hmm. many times uh, around this event and to discuss about that and we really want to to make something yes something good and something uh, very linked with our values. So it was very important for us. It was some one of our priority uh, this past two months. So uh, I hope I will, it will be okay and we still have like 10 days for training. So I, I hope it will be okay. But I think that uh, I'm I'm well trained on altitude, but less trained just in the running capacity. Right, got it. So yes, you have this new race that you and your wife have created called Ultra Spirit, yes. Ultra Spirit, which is coming up in September, early September, right? Yes. Um, which is exciting. You're creating your own race. Like it's a couple races between 25 and 50 kilometers in your region where you live. Uh, and this is a new kind of entrepreneurial journey. Uh, prior to that, you were a winemaker, which I want to get into, but like what inspired you to create your own race? But so uh, it's a bit uh, like a, a consequence of uh, why we stop uh, the winery. Uh, and yes, for us, it was really important to, it's not really a race, it's more like an event, I think, mm -hmm. about ultra distance, because we we were thinking, okay, um, like in five years or 10 years, if we want to do uh, something in the mountain, uh, something organized in the mountain, what it will be? And we were thinking, I'm not sure we'll go again in UTMB, maybe yes, or I'm not sure we'll go again in a classic ultra trail. I think we... We would like to to be together to share something like as a team. We would like to have some good moment with the other participant, even with the organizer. We would like to be like uh, in total immersion with the territory and the 
the speciality and and we we won't like to to discover like very very deeply the place where we are mm -hmm. and to to have some fun around the like the basics which is ultra trial so we say okay we have to organize something like we can we can answer to that and we were thinking just okay what what we what could be very nice for us in five years to have and then we organize that event yeah and so it's a it's a team based thing yes. right like 25 teams three people on a team yeah is we, it like a relay or you run no, together no, no, no. with your teammates you start together yeah. and you finish together and you sleep together and uh -huh. you eat together and you <laughs> sleep in a tent of three people without any shower during two days uh -huh. so it will it's be like a, a reality it show. will be a very nice experience for three people but uh, with the team, uh, between the team too, I think because uh, this year we start just with 25 team and I think uh, it is, there will be some very good uh, relationship in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the bivouac and it will be interesting. And one thing interesting too is that, that okay, performance is important and the time, uh, time of running will be important too, but I think what is the most important is to to be in the mountain, to discover yourself, to discover your team, to discover each other. So that's why everybody will run the same amount of time. So you will start uh, the Friday for six hours, then you will have 11 hours on Saturday, and then you have five hours again on the Sunday. So it will be around 20, right. 21 hours of running during the weekend, which is not nothing, but it's not like 21 hours in, in one time. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody will run the same amount of time, which is a very difficult for us as organizer because uh, you have to think that the first uh, team uh, will run faster than the last team. Yeah. So they will make some like uh, different loop uh, to arrive all together at, at the end. Like we would like that people arrive in less than 30 minutes. So it will be very interesting mm. to 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 organize it and uh yeah i hope it would be it would be fun for the people and we will make some different activity at the middle like uh, you arrive at the top on the mountain and you will have to to make a game to just to to understand wh what is the difference between the summer cheese and a winter cheese which is uh -huh. impossible uh, at the middle <laughs> of a race but then if you are not able to do that you will have a penalty of 25 minutes ah, so the team will say yes uh, people will say okay no matter if I run fast or not I, I must have to focus on my taste <laughs> and so it will be interesting because uh -huh. you will have like 10 games like that during the three days that's cool and during the day during the night and I think it's it's really different than a normal race right. and so I you think can be the it, fastest runners but if you fail all those you want other tests. Yeah, you want one the right. competition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a great spin on the whole. And thing. we try to make something that even if you are the faster and the tr stronger runner, it's not sure that you will win the game. Mm. The game I, I not only on the spot. Right. I think, yeah. Yeah. I like that approach. I I just the other day I did a podcast with with Malcolm Gladwell, who's a writer. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's also, he's super into running. And he he always is thinking about ways to change the way that we do sports to make them more interesting. And he had this idea that high school cross country teams should, uh, it should be reconfigured such that it's not about whoever wins the race for that team, but it's the combined time of like, you know, the 10 people on the team. So the the slowest person on the team is just as important as the fastest. And so everybody, you're incentivized, you know, as a team to cheer for the, you know, the 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 least talented person or the least well-trained person on your team, which is similar to the idea that you just shared. Like, how can you even the playing field and and make it kind of up for grabs for anybody? It's not just about the best athlete. Yeah. And it's even even without the activity, if you run a, in a team of three, I think the, the best team will not be the the team of the best free runner. It right. will be the team we will take care of the most of the third runner. Right. Because the third runner, the slowest runner, is the most important one. Mm. And if you don't take care of each other, you Doesn't will matter. be not able to finish. <laughs> and that's why uh, even at the edge station, I say, okay, you have to stop at least 25 minutes for everybody. Mm. 
with that, the education will be more a cool moment. Family can come and you have time to discover and to discuss with each other. And you will have time to take care of the third runner. Mm -hmm. If during 25 minutes, you don't take care of the, uh, the other pe person of your group, I think it's a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because if you arrive, the first runner is easy. He can, yes, change the shoes, help the other runner, even made a massage or... Okay, ask and change uh, the nutrition strategy and help him, and it will it, it can change a lot because uh, I think it's very important to know that because then if they want to make an ultra, they will have more experience and more idea about what can happen in an yeah. ultra. And I think all the activity it looks like okay, tasting a cheese is there's no 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 <laughs> no comparison, with with, yeah. nothing to do with it here. Yeah. But finally, if you think each activity will have a sense for yourself, for your team, and for your experience and your way on ultra, and uh, that's what I, we would like to, to 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 show to people at the end is that okay, you you did ten activities, you did three days, you don't did an ultra, but with all of that, I think for your next ultra, you will be more ready. Right. And it makes it more fun. So that person who's trying something for the first time will have a positive experience that will make them enthusiastic about like learning more and uh, we, doing we, more. we hope so. We hope yeah, that yeah. we will have fun and we hope that they will have fun yeah. too. Otherwise we miss something. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, you know, a lot of people perhaps expected you to show up at UTMB again and go for a fifth <sighs> win. Um, these dates coincide, that makes that impossible. Is it, you know, was that, I assume this is why you're not participating in UTMB or is it just like, I did that, I don't need to go back there. What is your relationship to that race? I, I'm I'm not sure I will go back in the uh -huh. future because I did already uh, five times and I win it four times and I did three times CCC. So I'm, I'm not sure I will go back to UTMB. Mm -hmm. I cannot promise it 100%, but uh, maybe I will go back and a bit different and with some other people, I don't know, but uh, for sure it's not my uh, goal to to be the first to win it five times or six times or even four times because last year everybody said, oh, you are here to be the first to win it four times. Uh, okay, if you want, but not, not that really. That wasn't your motivation. No, 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 it's not my motivation. And I think... That's why I win it four times. It's yeah. just because it was not my motivation. But uh, no, I, I, for me, try try running means like some different things, some travel, some discovering, some some other race. And I think there's many, many, many races in the world. And uh, yeah, I think it's UTMB. It's it's important. It's a very nice race, an incredible race. And even if people say, ah, oh, it's too crowded, man, oh, there's too much people, and it's. Uh, it's a big race, a big mess. Okay, but Chamonix is Chamonix, UTMB is UTMB, and even river race or without a race, when you are here and you say, okay, you have to to cross three different country, you have to make the, a loop around this amazing mountain. It's amazing. It's very wonderful mm -hmm. and magnificent. And uh, I really enjoy that that part of the of the France and of the Alp. And um, yeah, for me, it's when I think UTMB, it's uh, it's very good, good memories, and for sure I, I will be there again one time. But I'm not sure I will race again to to win it because uh, I I did it, and uh, I have many, many other goals, and uh, and I I want to to discover something else and to travel and to make something different, yeah. and and I have, I have many, many plans in in my head for the next few years. So. Yeah. Well, I think it's cool that you're always kind of iterating and growing, and and not afraid to kind of let go of things to try new things, which kind of brings up the 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 winemaking thing. I mean, for years, your wife and, and yourself were creating wine, right? In Beaujolais region, you've since moved to the mountains, but talk a little bit about that. Like that's a world I know very little about, but feels like it would be uh, an all consuming kind of affair to create great wine. Yeah, it was a uh, it was very interesting. And for UTMB, it's just uh, a smaller joke. 
I would like to add. It's just that uh, I start. To, I, I don't want to go back to UTMB because I would like. I really would like that an American runner can win it uh, uh, for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's very sweet of you. That's the pull quote. We'll take that out. That's the that's the thing you're going to get quoted on. <laughs> no, no, just any American in particular you might be thinking <laughs> of. Uh, it's, uh, no, I, I like all the American runner, but uh, yes, uh, I have one of them uh, not far from my house, and I, uh, I hope. He, he could be. I think he's easier. doing everything in his power right now <laughs> yeah. to make that happen just for you. Sure. And no, but the, about the wine, it was, um, yeah, the wine was really passionate. But to be honest, at the beginning, we were not thinking uh, that uh, this this job is so is so passionate and so complete and so different every day. We were just thinking that, uh, okay, we, 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 we like each other with my wife. We get married uh, since 11 years, uh, two days ago. Oh, so, <laughs> so yeah, we are really close and we want, really want to, to build something together. But we were thinking, okay, I'm physio, I'm an international runner. She works from, uh, on a way. I work on my way. Just too many things, and we never see each other, mm. and it's not the the way that we want to spend our life. So we have to have a common projects, and what we like is to be out, to be in the nature, to feel the you know the terror. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a good the one. land, yeah, the land, the and, soil, yeah, and the roots, and it's very important for us. And so we were thinking maybe we will have some animals, maybe we will. Uh, have a bed and breakfast house and share something with the people locally and mm -hmm. something like that. And maybe we can have uh, this possibility to to take this winery. It's a, an old history with his family. We were family, but not as close as we think, but uh, it's helped a lot for us. But we were thinking, okay, animals, you have to be there every day. And bed and breakfast is exactly the same. And with an uh, international runner career, it's not maybe possible. So maybe the winery could be the best option. And that's why we say, okay, we will try this option. And then we discover this. We, we knew that uh, we like the wine. We like to taste some different wine. Even when we are in US or in France, it's just so interesting to see that, okay, in that area, it's totally different than that area. There's an history. From this region to this region, I, and we are really passionate about the taste and about the feeling and the history and everything. So we knew that it would be something that very pleasant for us. But then we have to, we, we had discovered that each season is totally different, mm -hmm. and each moment of the season it's totally different because you have to focus on commercializing, of communication, of creating the bottles, on the vinification, on the work, uh, on the vineyard, and each moment, it's totally different. And it was so helpful for us to discover everything and to play with that. So it was a, a full, full, full-time job. Mm. But it was so interesting. And we have an amazing 10 years uh, on the vineyard. And and yes, we, we really enjoy that. And we, we developed some many, many projects about that, like, like f during the pandemic. We developed something uh, like... Uh, bit more ecological is to to bring the wine from the valley to the hut to the mountain by foot instead of helicopter oh wow and it was very interesting very hard <laughs> yeah. but very interesting but uh, this project uh, even if we stop we we want to continue it and i was there like uh, on mon next last monday like two days ago to bring to di two different and during the day and it was like eight hour working yeah. with uh, 30 kilo on your backpack mm. and it's so interesting to bring the wine from the valley to the earth, even if some other things uh, came to the earth by helicopter, at least the wine came back by foot. And is that and it's so is interesting. the idea is that uh, for like sustainability reasons, yeah. just to say yeah. this is possible? It's not yeah. just for sustainability, but it's just to show people it bring directly from the producer to the consumer. Right. And, and even... It's true that the sustainability part, it's, it's really, really important for us, but it's just people, they will take a glass of wine. They know from where the wine is coming. They know how the wine is coming to the hut. Mm -hmm. And then you are with your friends in the mountain, with the sunset, take your glass of wine. It's, I think it's a totally different right. wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can see that. And I know... You were growing, uh, you're, you're doing it organic, or at least one of the yeah, ones yeah, is organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was 
one of the things that why, why we have to stop is because it's a it's a, a lot of cost and so we, a lot we, we are not the that. owner of the of the land and uh, it's maybe too much uh, too much money to continue in our way mm. for them and then with the kids and it was too it means too much traveling for me from the mountain place where we are actually to the Beaujolais so it's many many things that we say okay yeah we did it for 11 years maybe we it's time to switch from something else and we really want to focus on that event so it's it's many many reasons that we we change but uh but this kind of project with that we want to continue it because it is very very interesting and yeah tonight uh, uh I, I don't know if you will taste it tonight but uh, i have some wine for you maybe you will taste it with your family right, we'll just see. To, to enjoy it <laughs> it's, it's it's uh well it's a different conversation but <laughs> about my relationship with wine. But anyway, um, Beaujolais is, I mean, it's not that far from Geneva, right? It's fairly close, but you're not in the for, mountains, right? For so you, you in the U.S. is not yeah, far. Yeah, it looks close on the map <laughs> yeah. to me. <laughs> like, or you, you think it's like, a, no, no, like it's, uh, it's a couple hours in the car, right? Yeah, I think it's two hours, yes. Oh, two that's hours. nothing. No, no, it's not, it's not yeah. big, but... Uh, the, but for you the, to train day in a day the out to get is, to the mountains. The wound is totally different, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you may, so instead of having to go back and forth with the kids, it's like, let's simplify our lives. We, you move to the mountains. Yeah. And it's, yeah, because mm -hmm. I, it means that, uh, we were living, uh, in the Beaujolais place and mm -hmm. in the Beaufortin place, uh, at a different moment of the year. So they have to change the school, uh, two times a year. And for them, it's, uh, I can understand that it's a bit hard and there's, yes, many, many reasons. And now we live, yes, in a small village in the, in the earth of the Alps and, for training, it's really, really better for me. And I think for for life, it's it's more sustainable and it's more interesting for mm -hmm. us. And uh, yeah, it was it was hard for, when you change something in your life, it's always hard to make the move. But I think we are, we are happy with our new new choice and and I hope we will enjoy it for, for a long yeah. time, yeah. And from a parenting perspective, I mean, your kids are still so young, but to kind of raise them in that mountain environment, you know, I would assume on some level you're exposing them to this, you know, the kind of activities that you love. Uh, they'll grow up with that. Um, they'll have their own minds about what they want to do, of course. But do you have a sense of whether one or more of your kids is, you know, prone to the kind of things that you're that you like to do, or is it too early to tell? Yeah, I, we don't want to push themselves too much on, yeah. on what we did and on the competition approach because uh, already people do it, do it for us. <laughs> oh, I will do it like your father. And you will do that, that. No, no, no. We, yeah. we try to. It never but, works out But like it's that. true that they, they don't have uh, like a TV at home. It's true that uh, they are always, always uh, in Outdoors. the nature and in the mountain and there's not too many cars and they are, they, yeah, they, yes, it's a totally different life that if you live in a city, for mm -hmm. sure. And uh, it's a very small school. There's a, there's not too many children, and they all know each other. And and yeah, during winter times, they ski like uh, two times or three times a week with the school, and two times or three times a week with the club, and wow. one time with me. So it means that they, they can ski like six times a week. It's just. Pff, it's yeah. just, yes, it's it's sure that they, for sure, they will be passionate about uh, about snow, about mountain, about everything, and and yeah, when they, they they came with with us to the hut, they are so happy to sleep in a hut, and they already made like eight hundred meters elevation gain at six years old because wow. I have free free box of wines on my backpack mm -hmm. so they know that I, I cannot rail them so I say, okay right. I have to go by myself because my father are already four box of wine so they did it finally and it, it, sometimes they even did it faster than us because with four box of wine you are, <laughs> you are so heavy mm -hmm. so yeah cool. it's sure that uh, yeah they, they enjoy the life I hope they enjoy the life in the mountain but uh, yeah they have, they have smiles that's Every cool. day, so it's okay. <laughs> and and the wine, even though you're not doing it anymore, I mean, there's still you have plenty of wine still to sell, right? Like yeah, yeah. for years to come. So, do you have that available at some of these races in Europe? Like, how does that? How do you distribute that? 
Yeah, we, we try to just uh, make like a direct direct setting, so directly to the people. So we choose like three to four events every year, not too much because uh, it's it's important for us to take time to discuss and to spend some time with people. Uh -huh. So it's a, it's mean a lot of energy. So we just choose like four to five uh, events uh, every year to, to, to sell it and to, to share it with the people. But uh, yeah, I think for the next two to three years, we have, uh, we have the possibility to sell it, uh, to still sell it. And uh, we, we made some different like try runner box every year. So we made a, uh, we made a last one and we, it will be released in like, Two months, I think it will be ready for for the end of the of the season, and it's a very interesting one that uh, we we try to relate the, all the history of the last ten years. It's a mix between running and creating the wine, mm. so we made a lot of of joke and illustration about that. So for us, it's a uh, it's a bit emotional uh, this last uh, this last box. Yeah, so running and drinking wine combined into one experience. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and normally for people, it's not a, it's not like a, a good uh, runner approach or a good athlete approach. Uh -huh. But uh, now we we discuss a lot together, and you can understand that finally, with my way to train and my way to live, it's it's not impossible to have a winery and to have a, and to drink a glass of wine at the end of of your training mm -hmm. and training and be a top athlete. Because I think it's important to say that uh, if you spend 10 hours in the mountain, then okay, you can arrive and drink uh, nothing and uh, just uh, eat uh, some veggies and going to sleep. Or otherwise you can say, okay, I ran 10 hours and it was a very good training and I was with some friend in the mountain and now I have to have a social moment with them. It could be a coffee or a glass of wine or beer or whatever you want. But for me, it's important to say, okay, it was an amazing day. And then we, when you will be in the race, And if you think, okay, that training of 10 hours, then I said to my friend, no, I cannot come with you because I have to make my compacts and I have to sleep early right. and I have to do nothing. And and you will remember when it will be an hard moment during that, okay, it will be a hard training. And then I don't have a good moment with my friends. I was by myself in my room and it was hard again. Or you can remember, okay, it was an art training, but it was a so good training. And then I have a so nice moment with some friends and we have a nice dinner and we have a nice moment. Wow, it was so good. And then you are in positive attitude and you can continue. And for me, it's my approach to say, okay, okay, it's hard, but I know it will be hard, but at least I have this very nice training in my back, back and, and it's so good to think about that at this moment. So that's why I try to, to enjoy that. And that's why I say to people, okay, I won't say to you drink a, a bottle of wine just one hour before the race, but like one week before or even two months before when I saw people, no, I cannot test your wine. I have UTMB in three months. I say, wow, three months <laughs> before the race, you yeah. don't want to taste one glass of my wine. Okay, maybe you push too your, much your pressure. Are, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it, it goes back to what we were talking at the beginning about like, longevity in your career. Like if you, you have to enjoy what you're doing, I if think, you're gonna stay <laughs> in it. And ultimately, the more you're enjoying this pursuit as hard as it is, uh, the, the kind of higher you'll be able to reach. Like, you know, but to live under such a strict, you know, kind of rule book, uh, maybe you have one great year, but in five years, you're not gonna wanna do it anymore. I think if it's too hard for your body, it's not good, but everybody's different. Some people, they like to to have a, like a life like that, like athlete life, and they can do it for for decade, no problem. Mm -hmm. I, and I know some athletes like that. And even Kilian, he, I think he, his passion is not about like food or social moment or something like that, but it's his passion is like that. But people will say, I really like wine, but I, I cannot have a glass of wine because in six months I will do this race. Mm -hmm. How can this kind of people continue this for 20 years? It's impossible sure. because for me, it's not possible. So you have to be like well balanced with what you think, what you feel and what you love. And then you can think about longevity. And I think for short distance, it's a different thing. But for long distance, I think it's... A, I think it's the best approach to be well balanced and to to enjoy what you do every day. I think it's very very important for me. Mm -hmm. And so, how old are you now? Thirty six. Yes, thirty six. So, mm -hmm. how long do you imagine yourself being competitive in the sport? 
I hope uh, for, for many years. Yeah. But uh, yes, uh, I, I, well, I, I try to do what I love and, uh, and I, I don't want to change my way of life. So if in five years, uh, I don't know, the level increased a lot and on 100 miles, it became more and more athletic and more, more competition and more like you have to change your life mm. and stop to, to, to have a normal life and family beside your training to be able to reach the top. It's no matter for me. I will continue. I, I hope I, I will continue and I will do it again. Maybe not at the first position, but I, I don't want to stop running and I don't want to stop traveling and discovering some new races and meet the community like that yeah. and to have some project. But uh, maybe I won't be I won't be the top in five or ten years, but I, I'm sure I will. I, I'm able to continue to progress. Maybe I will progress less than the the top competitors, but I'm sure I c I'm able to continue to progress because I think uh, I continue to experience my slave, my, my, yes, my, my life. And uh, I'm sure I, I will, I will have some new things to discover. Right. You've created a life that's conducive to the training, but also to the kind of joyful pursuit of all of, like everything seems like it's in a, in a, in a nice balance that will allow you to continue to do it, whether you're able to be on a podium or not, almost feels secondary from the way that you explained it. Yeah, and uh, since, I don't know, maybe 10 years, no, but why, well, yeah, I think 10 years now, I try to have some project, off project, uh, in plus of other things, of the races. And I did, we discussed a lot about that with Jim Wamsley and some other runner. And, and I'm sure even if it's not on, on the race or on classical race, I'm sure I, I will be able to continue some different project. I, I never been in Himalaya and I, I think it's some incredible mountain over there and some incredible project to do over there. And uh, I'm really passionate when I, I, I heard a story about Nolans, uh, not far from there. And uh, it would be so interesting to make it like differently, like with Jim maybe to, to spend some some hours in the mountain, like for 25 or 30 or 40 hours in the mountain together. And yeah, I discussed with Tim Tollefson. He joined me on the Pacific Crest, on the John Muir Trail mm -hmm. in 2017. Jim was with me on the Pacific Crest, I, uh, Crest Trail in 2019. And pff, it's so interesting. And there's a Colorado Trail just over there. And I have, I have a ton of projects that I would like to do in trail running. And, uh, I think it's the most important goal for me. It's more important than winning that race or that race or that race. It's mm -hmm. just, to, wow, what I have to do in the next 10 years, plenty of things, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, before we kind of round this out, there are um, plenty of runners that, that listen to this show uh, and aspiring runners, people who are thinking about perhaps their first trail race or their first ultra marathon. So I thought it'd be great if you could share maybe some wisdom around, um, you know, what what are some common mistakes that people make that you see in training for their first race or, um, or in being kind of maybe too afraid to sign up for something that seems impossible to do? Like, how do you think about that? Or, you know, what, what would you say to that person? Yeah, I think the progression is something very, very important. I, I know that uh, maybe it's because the force of the media, of the people to say the, the growl and the things to do is 100 miles, but you cannot start your running career with a 10K <laughs> and one year later uh, at the start line of 100 mm. miles. Yes, you can do it and and maybe you can finish it, but if you think longevity, if you think progression, how you can sp you can split from 10k to 100 miles in one year. Yes, if you if you, uh, if you take a look of that, if you have a look of, on that, it's not just possible. So I think the progression is really really important, and to think that uh, yes, you have time to do it because for me, 100 miles is a dream. So if you achieve your dream too fast, then okay, you can have some other dream, but if, it, if it's a big dream. No matter if it takes you one year, two years, three years, five years, maybe it's it's maybe a better dream if it takes a long time to, uh, to achieve it and mm -hmm. to have that. So I, I think it's very important to have this kind of progression, to have different tests, to have different history, to take time to meet the people, to discover yourself, to test the, 
I, 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 uh, yeah, I have, with, with my partner, with Salomon, we worked since 10 years to develop the product and to test the product. So it's so interesting to test these kind of bags of shoes, what, what is the better way for us and the nutrition strategy and everything. I think it's so interesting to test everything. So people have to take time to test everything, to test themselves, to discover themselves before going to the one red mm -hmm. miles. But But the second thing that you say is true. That's wow, 100 miles. It looks like impossible, but not, not. I think 100 miles is even more possible than a marathon because in marathon you have the perspective of performance and of time. Mm -hmm. And maybe in New York marathon it's a bit different because it's okay. I just want to do New York marathon, no matter the time. But normally people on mar on one running marathons they, they want to put time. On 100 miles, no matter the time, mm -hmm. you just want to finish it for the first runner to the last runner. It's the same goal. It's just to achieve this adventure and this journey. And it's so hard and so interesting to do. But it's not impossible because it's it could be just walking, just wa running. And if, if you go it slowly, I'm sure it's possible. But it, you have to be really passionate about that. And you have to know why you do that. If you are at the start line of 100 mile race just because it's a bet with your friend or just because you were drink, <laughs> you're in trouble. And you say, okay, I made this bet with my friend and now I'm here, but I'm not sure I want to be there. Okay, don't take the start because uh, running 100 miles, it's, it must be something that uh, you feel in your heart and, and you are really motivated about that. Because of course it will be hard, but if you know why you are here, if it's a dream, I'm sure it's possible to do it. Mm, yeah, knowing your why and patience, right? That idea of progression really is about patience. I think so many people really overestimate what they can do in a year and they yeah. bite off more than they can chew and then find out quickly enough that, you know, that maybe that wasn't possible. And then they give up and they miss the greater opportunity, which is understanding what's possible with persistence and patience over an extended period of time. Maybe it's 10 years, but yeah, if it's, you fall in love with something me. and you slowly, yeah. slowly iterate on it in that really non-sexy way that no one's paying attention to, like that's truly how you accomplish these goals that seem audacious. Yeah, I think I start running long distance in, yes, yes. I mean, were you a guy who won your first years, yeah. races right out of the bat and were just winning everything that you entered? No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's even for me, and I was able to win some big ultra race. It's taken me 10 years to, to do it. Mm -hmm. So 10 years is not nothing. So I, I'm sure I, we can do it in four, five, six years. But, but uh, yes, four, five, six years for people, it's too long. And mm -hmm. but but I think it's uh, it's it's not a big deal huh, to make a 100 mile race is not nothing and if you consider it like oh, okay it's just 100 mile mile race you say I, I can do it so I will do it in one year no I think it's not a good approach 100 right. mile race it's not nothing and if you think it's nothing it will be too hard for you <laughs> <laughs> that's a very wise thing to say yeah. <laughs> I mean, how about just start with, can you go out and walk around a mountain all day? You know, like instead of thinking about how fast you can run and how long you can sustain a certain pace. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the best thing to say, just to say, okay, no matter, uh, no matter the pace, no matter the elevation, no matter the distance, and everybody say about training, uh, what is your mileage? Uh, what is the distance you do each week? I say, I don't know. <laughs> Even for my event that we will create in September, we don't want to give the distance. We will say to people, okay, you will have to spend five to six hours in the mountain. Yeah, but what, what is the distance? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> 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 I don't know. It's Maybe I can give you elevation gain. Maybe I can say you some different thing, but I don't know. It, it will depend your pace. It will depend the forecast. It will depend some the terrain, right. everything. But I don't know what will be the distance. It's just... You have to be able to spend like six hours the first day and eleven hours the second day in the mountain, and then we will see what we what would be the distance. But we right. we don't know, and I don't want to know. That'll drive Americans crazy. <laughs> but what's great about that is it forces you to let go of all of those attachments and expectations. Like, can you free yourself from, you know, what you imagine it's it is or it can or will be, and just be in the experience. 
which is really what it's about, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good measure. <laughs> where That's do you, uh, where, you know, what do you, you have your idea of, uh, you know, what you want to do with these races that you're creating, but where do you see the future of trail running and ultra running like 10 years from now? You know, wh- how are you thinking about like the new generation of young ultra runners who are coming up and what is that world going to look like in the not too distant future? <laughs> It's it's hard to say because uh, I'm so happy that there's more and more and more people practicing trail running, but uh, in in a sustainable way, you can say okay, if it's more and more event and more and more thing organized, and if if you start a race now, you are 100 people, and in 10 years you are 10,000 people. I think it's too much for the track. It's too much for for everything. So that's why with the event and that's why I think with the organizer and runner, we say, okay, to race in a year, it's it's good. I think it's it's good for the body and it's good for the planet too because uh, I, I can do like 10 ultra trail in a year, but it's mean that 10 travel. If you do only two, it's already two travel. I, okay, it's a lot, mm-hmm. but it's only two travel for international athlete. I think it's it's a minimum that I have to do. Uh, to meet the community and to to be there uh, at the top of the international race, but it's only two races, and that's why I I, I try to discuss with people that uh, there's only there's not only a life uh, when you have a big number, you can make things by yourself, and that's why in my event, and that's why when I discuss with you and something like that, I say a lot that you have to experience yourself alone in the mountain to discover yourself to. To understand how, when you go in a mountain, you have to to take care of the forecast of, of your equipment, about the map, about everything, and you have to take an headlamp, you have to take a survival blanket, mm-hmm. and you have to yes, to take care from each other if you are in a group. And uh, I think it's very important. And I think in ten years, I'm sure that there will be more and more and more tri runner, but maybe maybe less races and maybe people, they will do it by themselves and they will organize their adventure by themselves. And and with that, there's a no ton limit. of possibility yeah. and no limit because uh, you can imagine your personal adventure and what is more relevant for you. And because uh, I say that my season is from July to October, but every place in the world are different and every people are different. So you have, there's no definition of tri running because you can do it uh, along the coast. Mm-hmm. You can do it in the mountain. You can do it in the middle it's of whatever nowhere. whatever you decided to be. Yeah, and me, I, I like when it's in the mountain, but for some people, they prefer to do it in a single tray flat above the ocean and everybody's different and everybody has some different tastes. So with that, with that evolution, everybody can build their own adventure by themselves, alone, long distance, short distance, coast distance, mountain, coast challenge. And what is important for me is that people, they can discover themselves, they can discover the nature and they are out from some long day in the mountain. And people they say, oh, yeah, it's not sustainable, try running and too many races, too many events. Yeah, but you can just practice try running without any race, mm-hmm. without any event and by yourself and 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 uh, I think it's a good approach, and I, I would like to to say to people, try it, test it, play with that. And for me, it's so passionate since more than twenty years, and and so uh, I I like to push people to say, okay, try it, and you will see it, it's possible to do things mm. that you are not thinking it's possible. It's just twenty years ago, for me, doing like hard work one hundred, it's just unbelievable right and 20 years later i was able to win it and to have the record on that race so nothing is impossible so you can you can do it and and the victory is not just about winning it's just just accomplish your dream so this is what is interesting in try running and in ultra trial is that everybody has his own victory and everybody can share the same dream and the same adventure because uh when we are on the start line of the Hardock 100, the winner of the race and the last runner of the race have the same dream. It's just to to finish the loop and to mm. see Silverton again. 
no mm -hmm. matter the place, we just want to finish it and to accomplish it. And I think this is unique in all of, all of the other sport. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, that's beautifully put. I mean, there is this inherent uh, sort of paradox with the growth of trail running because the roots of it and and what is so alluring about it is that connection with nature in that and that kind of the solitude of it all and the you know the kind of silence just you and your breath and the wind and whatnot um, but as these races and interest in this world continue to grow suddenly these you know you're you're sleeping in a tent at the starting line and there's two people there or whatever now there's you know like media and it's like money and all the commercialization and all of that which obviously is antithetical to the whole spirit of the entire thing but i think what is great about these self-styled adventures is that that's where people's heads are at right i mean the pandemic when all the races ended everybody had to get creative and suddenly you saw this explosion of people just saying well i don't need to wait for permission for this race to happen. I'm gonna go out and like do my own thing. And now I feel like there's a lot of momentum behind that type of, of endeavor. And it doesn't have to be an FKT. It could just be, hey, I have a trail in my, you know, a mile from my house that I've never gone on before. Let's see what we can do. Let's yes. have some fun. Fastest no time is, is a thing, but a try yeah. is, is a thing too. And just trying to do something is, is I think something very good. And even for me, when I, when I start a, a FKT, okay, the FKT may be a good excuse with all the partner and everything, but uh, in my, for my feelings, the best thing is just to try it mm -hmm. and to do it. And okay, the race is cloudy, it's many people, it's uh, it's too much sometimes, but it's uh, if I did two races, it's 40 hours and it's 800 hours of training for 40 hours, right. so it's not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Fantastic, man. Well, I think uh, that's a good place to kind of end it for today. Um, I'm excited to watch you race at, at Hard Rock. Seems like you're in good spirits and your body is cooperating. So I think it's going to be exciting to watch that showdown. Yeah, yeah it, would be, it would be so nice. And anyway, what what's happened, we will see. And no matter, I'm just so happy to be there and... Uh, I'm and to come back there and uh, for me it was a, a good moment to to share it with you at least and uh, I'm so happy to to make this experience and uh, and I'm sure I will have some memories from from the next adventure. Yeah, very cool. Well, let's continue this conversation at a later date. I'd love to have you back on, and uh, I really appreciate you bringing all your thoughtfulness and experience to this conversation. It's really cool. So. Um, what you're doing is really inspiring. I think it it, it really uh, inspires all of us to kind of reach a little bit further and deeper. And you know, kind of what you said about how it took you 20 years to get where you're at. It's very easy to look at someone like yourself and say, "Well, he just it, it's easy for him. He's you know built for this and all of that." And maybe there's some truth in that. But you know, to understand like the passion that you have for the sport, the dedication, and just the the love of the outdoors and the you know joyful expression that you you know bring to everything that you do i think is uplifting for for everybody to hear so thank you for that thank you very much very cool all right uh, if people want to learn more about you what's the where do you like to direct people i mean your instagram account is that the best place yeah i try to to be myself on my yeah. on my social media account uh, yes of course and yeah i can i can meet uh, each other on on a trail uh, one day i hope but yes uh, i try to to work a bit on my social media to to share my passion and my values and uh, i hope to answer to to you. Cool. And I'll have links up to all of that stuff in the show notes. So just check that out. And uh, thanks, Francois. Thank to you. Be continued. Cheers. Peace. Yeah.